welcome to the Masonic Curators, another episode being brought to you in part by the Whence Came You podcast, the Massachusetts Lodge of Research, and the Masonic Historical Preservation Society. My name is Keith McKinnon. I am a member of the Grand Lodge uh, Museum and Library Committee. I'm also a past collector and past curator uh, with 30 years experience with Masonic, which I like to call junk, but Masonic artifacts. Today, I have brought to you a Masonic tribute. Now, for some of us, when we're collecting or putting together a collection for either for ourselves or maybe for our building, um, I think sometimes we forget or, under, or don't fully understand or ask ourselves how Freemasonry came into the home. Now, we as collectors uh, do collect Masonic dishes and glassware, swords and paperwork and meadows, but what about those items that came into the home for the home. Now, several years ago, I did such a presentation uh, on this topic to a podcast at the Harvard Lodge and also one at Ezekiel Bates Lodge. Now, Freemasonry came into the home at an early age. Perhaps some of us might think, well, maybe the mid-19th century or 20th century, but it was actually the late 18th century. And we could find items that could have been purchased and also used in the home by our Masonic forefathers which is one such item which I had wish with which I wish I had here today is a Masonic grandfather clock. Now some of these grandfather clocks were made by small companies and or individuals. Uh, they were made in Scotland, England, and here in the United States. And some of them date back to the 1780 and 1790s. But most I have seen about 1800 to 1820s. Another way how Freemasonry came into the home is that by the way of ceramics. And if a brother had money and perhaps a connection, he may have been able to purchase himself his own firing glass. Today we call these firing glasses table lodge glasses. Uh, but back in the day, these glasses were the item to own. They were hand wheel etched. They came in a number of different Masonic emblems uh, that were on them. They were had very heavy bases and some of them actually came in different colors. Also, if a brother had money and the connection, he could have been able to purchase a Liverpool picture or maybe a Sutherland or Sunderland Masonic picture or mug. Then, of course, those beautiful hand-painted Chinese import ceramic bowls and plates, as well as other chinaware that was brought in from England and France, such as, such as some of those hand-painted decorative uh, trinket boxes in ceramic. And here in the United States, how Freemasonry came into the home were by those samplers and quilts that either uh, Freemasons' wives or children made, and that's how Freemasonry came into the home. But today I present to you this piece. Now, I do believe it is Eng English in origin. I have seen a few different examples of this piece over the years, and though it might have been used by the fraternity, I do believe it was widely used in a home of a Freemason. Now, you may look at it, you may say, well, it's a trivet. Yes, it is. But it's also called or known by as an adjustable Masonic fender trivet. Others were known just as fender trivets. And why it's called a fender trivet is basically because of this piece in the back, which is made of metal. And the fender would sit there, and this would sit on the fender. Now, in those days of old, most English homes were heated with uh, sort of a fireplace or an open stove, especially those in the, in the city. Uh, heated by wood, gas, or coal, most were done by coal and gas. Some of these stoves served as a way to heat the room and or to heat or cook food. In some cases, these open stoves were not as large as fireplaces, but had a metal fender in front of them to prevent sparks and heat debris from hitting the floor. Fenders for fireplaces were made of either brass or metal. Some were plain, others decorative, and were usually sat on the floor of the hearth of the fireplace. You can still find fireplace fenders today in historic homes, and still they are made today for fireplaces. But the early fenders 
uh, for those type of stoves that were smaller than a fireplace or basically just use it to, to heat up a room or to cook, uh, these, these type of fenders you don't find too much anymore because they were actually part of the metal of the stove that was inserted into the wall. The trivet would be used to keep uh, hot or heat up, say a cup of tea or hot water, perhaps a kettle, part of soup. As you can see, the surface where you put the item is not that big. Placing the trivet on the fender, one could then slide the item forward towards the heat to heat it up and then pull it away from the heat to take your item off the trivet. Now, this piece here doesn't have a wooden handle as I have seen a number of them do. Of course, a wooden handle would be very helpful if this was extremely warm by the heat of the stove. But a number of others I have seen do have a wooden handle, so you could slide the trivet back and forth. Also mentioned they came in different styles. Now, this one is the round head. I've also seen the square head with the square encompasses, and all of them have always said the word comfort on it, basically meaning to me that this was an item for the home, because where are you comfortable? Well, except for us Masons who love to live in large rooms, um, home is comfort. So this was basically made for the home of a Freemason. Though not dating, <clears throat> um, having a specific date to them, uh, we do know that these came from the 18th century and do know that some of them were made as early as the 1850s. This one in particular, I believe, is about the mid-1860s, uh, maybe early 1860s. Um, not always marked who the manufacturer was, but some of them were, and a couple of the manufacturers over in England were the Kendrick and Sons of West Bromwich, England, and the Tonk and Sons of Birmingham, England. Now, the trivets hung on the fender. Some stood on the hearth, and some were actually mounted to the side or inside of the fireplace or stove that had a hinge to allow the trivet to be moved in and out of the heat. The Masonic ones that I have seen are basically all the fender adjustable trivets that actually hang on the fender of the stove or fireplace. These are a good example of how Freemasonry came into the home, perhaps how Masonic Brother displayed to his family and friends just how proud he was to be a Freemason. Now, because of the amount of different uh, Masonic fender trivets I have seen over the years, uh, both Masonic and non-Masonic, I can't tell for sure whether or not some of them have been reproduced over the years. But this is a great piece of history uh, it shows how Freemasonry came into the home for the home use by a Freemason. So I want to thank you very much. Uh, please watch us on YouTube. Check us out on Facebook. Hit the like button and leave a comment. Thank you.